Attention, all curious minds, innovators, and trendsetters. It's time to pause, lean in, and get ready for an extraordinary journey as we dive deep into the fascinating realms of life, technology, entertainment, and business. Let's explore, learn, and grow together. Brace yourselves for the next thrilling episodes of Hit Their Talks is about to take off. Counting down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and here we go hi everyone sultan here we're back again this week at hip to talks and this time we're sticking to the influencer marketing because that is something that we approached a couple of months ago and now coming back to the subject because hey the 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 promotion seasons is coming up and uh, most probably brands are taking advantage of this uh of this period so i have with me uh from uh uh, Famesters, uh, Chief uh, Business Officer and Co-Founder Nadia Bubanikova. Hi, Nadia. Nice to have you here. Hi. Thanks for having me here. Glad to be a part of the podcast. All right. So, uh, yeah, before we dive in, uh, we have this tradition here on Hip to Talks that we would like to allow the guests to say a few words about themselves in their own words. So, so be my guest. Uh, sure. So... As you presented me, right, uh, I'm the chief business officer and co-founder of FameSource Influence Marketing Agency, and uh, we specialize in end-to-end -end influence marketing campaigns for the brands of different verticals, such as uh, fintech, trading, iGaming, uh, and software. So this is basically what we do. We operate on uh, all of the most important uh, on all of the most important and like popular influence marketing platforms, such as YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, Kick, uh, and many others. All right, thank you so much. So uh, we read your bio, uh, and, and my first question would be about what initially inspired you to transition from a career in, in economics uh, to influencer marketing, and, and how has your background helped you in your current role at Famesters? Well, obviously, I could be telling you now that um, my background in economics just drove my willingness to analyze ROIs and all the metrics and contribute to influencer marketing, but that would just be a lie. So I will be truthful and I will just say that um, I've always loved um, YouTube. I've always loved influencer growing up and uh, as well as video games. So when I learned that there, there actually is a real job that connects all of it, well, I just decided that it would be stupid for me not to try it out. So I did, and it actually went out pretty well. All right. So how has this uh, this role helped you in, uh, in in your how how has this background uh, helped you in your role? Uh, yeah, uh, I would say that working in economics before really helped me to uh, have this like uh, analytical mind and be good with the. Uh, measuring performance with counting all the metrics and uh, to actually drive influence marketing strategies now based on calculations and based on forecasts and not just based on uh, the creativity of the process. So I would say that this background actually helps me to uh, base all the decisions, all the creatives and all the briefs, basically all parts and segments of influence marketing campaigns uh, on numbers, on digits, and not on just um, some general ideas that someone might have about like the creative ideas for the influencers all right so yeah uh, so as you our audience may have probably seen that the influencer marketing is now used by approximately uh, 82 percent of brands uh, you can see them at uh, conferences you can see them at, at on banners on advertisements so uh, what are some of the key reasons uh, why it has become such a powerful tool especially in the iGaming business uh, and of course especially in the, the industries like online casino well obviously there are some marketing channels that are um, not available to the majority of uh, gambling brands so without being able to actually advertise their products openly on uh, let's say YouTube or Instagram or Facebook the majority of the brands um of the gambling and iGaming brands have transferred uh, to influencer marketing. And I would say that first it was to probably try it out and see how uh, the performance 
actually looks like. And then to just keep the results going because influencer marketing for um, iGaming brands can be a very nice uh, traffic channel. So I would say that if we're talking specifically about the iGaming brands, uh, one of the main reasons would be that influencer marketing Okay, once again, um, right. I would say that um, if we're talking about the iGaming products uh, specifically, um, influence marketing can be a lucrative traffic channel for them uh, because it allows uh, the audience not just see a banner or a mention of the product, but uh, it allows the audience to see what the product is about, how it's used. Because uh, if we're talking about like Twitch streamers or YouTube creators who are showcasing the platform and advertising it in their own way, they're always showing the product. They always show how to um, sign up, how to uh, how to play, how to basically use the platform. And it instantly gives much more trust to the audience uh, than a regular like ads that you can see uh, on the internet. So I would say the ability to really showcase the product and build up this trust to the product uh, after seeing how an influencer or someone else is actually using it and uh, has a nice experience using it is one of the best things about influencer marketing for ga gambling brands or for actually any other brand as well. Yeah, because now we the, the, there's reels and videos out there. It's not just like seeing banners. That, yeah. deposit an X amount and receive an X amount. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you can actually see people using the product. So. All right. So uh, can you walk us through the process of creating a, a successful influencer campaign from start to finish? This could be a roadmap for, for our audience interested in, in such activities and, and maybe showcase what are the uh, critical factors to consider when choosing influencers, especially now we're talking today about iGaming brands. Yeah, so <clears throat> obviously building a successful influencer marketing strategy involves a lot of planning, a lot of forecasting, a lot of calculating. And a big share of that is also, um, I would say, the creative process, because you need to think of the way to advertise your product to actually uh, help you reach the goals that you have. So uh, the process of creating a successful influencer marketing campaign actually begins well before even reaching out to the influencers. Uh, I would say that first and foremost, uh, the product needs to be fully ready and tested and launched. This may sound obvious, but I think you would be surprised how many brands actually do jump into influencer marketing before their product is even launched. Officially, I mean. So ensuring that the platform is stable, it's ready for the users, all of the payment methods are uh, working correctly uh, would help you to not only avoid negative feedback and make sure that uh, the user experience with the platform will be good. But uh, it will also help you from um, help you save yourself from having to reschedule the campaign several times, uh, losing some influencers, et cetera. Because if you move the campaign several times, let's say for two weeks or for a month or for two months, then the influencers that you were originally going to go live with which may have been the perfect match for a product. They will just drop out of the campaign and you will never hear from them again. So unfortunately, we've had several cases in our experience uh, with such brands uh, that were a uh, ready to allocate the budgets, to go through the strategy, to drive some creative ideas, but the product was not ready. So uh, we had to adapt the strategy each time uh, to all the new specifications of the product that we actually saw and uh, to do our best to keep the influencers from actually dropping out of the campaign. So I would say that this is step number one. It's crucial and nobody can prove otherwise. Uh, the next thing for gambling products, I would say, is to actually consider the correlation between the desired regions that you want to target and gambling licenses your product actually has. So, uh, for example, if a brand is actually targeting um, markets that require some special licensing, uh, like certain European countries, for example, uh, having a Curacao license will not do it, obviously. And uh, understanding this legal landscape of the regions that you want to target and choosing the influencers whose audience uh, actually aligns with the regions you're uh, interested in and you can legally operate in is uh, also key. Uh, another thing I would mention is uh, especially when it's your like first 
uh, step in influencer marketing, a very important thing is to have a fast fraud analytics team that will be able to analyze the traffic brought by the influencers. So you need to be able to quickly analyze uh, and study the influencers traffic for potential fraud or bots or for just like motivated traffic. Um, so without this, the campaign could obviously result in just wasted span, wasted budgets, and skewed performance results. Uh, the reason I mentioned this is because uh, the majority of gambling brands prefer, at some point of their influence marketing campaign, they prefer to work with uh, casino streamers, for example, on Twitch. And obviously these are these streamers are the people who know how the industry operates. They know that to get more deals, they have to be showing like good performance and uh, meeting the KPIs that uh, the product might not even be sharing with the streamers, but may have internally. So because they're focusing on gambling brands only, they know all of that. And they may be able, unfortunately, to uh, buy some additional traffic to make it look that they fulfill those KPIs so that the brand actually comes back to them and offers them another, another deal. So uh, to actually make sure that the campaign results are real, they are transparent, it's essential to have a fraud analytics team in place to always check the traffic after like one or two days uh, since it, it was like brought to the product. And probably the, the last thing I would say if we're talking about like this more general pieces of advice, I would say that the understanding of your strategy is also vital because there are many brands that approach us for brand awareness campaigns. And obviously brand awareness campaigns are so different from performance-based campaigns or uh, campaigns that are actually targeting the retention of the users. So understanding your clear objective and goal of each campaign uh, is crucial to be even able to drive those results. Because if you try to get everything at once and uh, you don't allocate specific uh, budgets and creatives and briefs to test out each idea individually, uh, then this will probably just be something in general. You won't really get the performance you need. You won't really get the retention you need. And the brand awareness will also kind of suck. So, All right. So these, so these would be like, like the, the four main steps. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they sound uh, easy, but they are very uh, crucial, uh, yeah. like because of this, especially when launching a campaign and having your links not working or your product not ready. That's awful. Yeah. All right. So uh, one challenge that many brands are facing is the measuring of the return of invest. Uh, and like you said, you need to have somebody in place to do all the analytics and performance uh, measuring. So. This happens when you're using influencer influencer marketing and uh, yeah, until some new tool appears, that's what you can do. This is a challenge. So how does uh, Famesters address this and what metrics do you prioritize when evaluating the success of a campaign? Well, um, I would say that at Famesters, we mainly focus on the KPIs um, set by the client. So. Um, I would say that the main things we are looking at to measure the success of the campaign, if we're talking about the performance campaign, obviously, uh, would be the cost per FTD, uh, the CPD, and the CPR. These are the metrics that we can track in real time, and the majority of our clients just provide us uh, with the access to their like tracking systems, and we can basically get those results in, in real time. Um, I think it's obvious why these metrics are crucial for us. They provide like clear data uh, on how well the campaign is actually driving like real users that will engage with the platform, that do engage with the platform. And um, as I said, it's really easy for us to get access to the to these metrics. However, when it comes to the ROI itself, it's I would say it's primarily the client's um, team that performs this analytics and this deeper analysis. Uh, we do not have we usually do not have access to additional data such as the sum of user deposits, the sums of their wins, their losses, which are basically essential for calculating the ROI on uh, the campaign as a whole. So while we do not have, uh, while we usually do not have visibility into this sums, we try to always work closely with the client to uh, get this metrics uh, that we can base our 
forecast on and our strategy on. So the first step for us in any kind of performance campaign is uh, determining the cost per FTD or uh, CPD that we should be targeting in each of the regions. And then moving back from uh, the KPA that we have set, uh, we can move to such metrics as um, CPRs, then uh, CTRs and CPMs, uh, which will help us like determine the best platform, the best uh, brief and other things for the creators. So we try to move backwards. First, we have the uh, final KPI, and then we just calculate everything backwards. All right. So yeah, we had uh, on our website uh, websites we have some banner listings, and we had a client. We cannot, of course, disclose their name, but yeah, we were sending a lot of traffic to them, and they were telling us that there's just like so little amount of people that are actually. Uh, depositing but they would not let us in on more reports so yeah it was very strange to see huge traffic going their way so yeah you can also you need to trust the the the, the advertiser as well your clients uh, when dealing with such cases all right so let's talk about social media trends because these change very fast i mean the hawk twa girl is already not trending so people are already focusing and shifting their focus on something else. So how how do your you and your team uh, stay ahead in these uh, changes, and how do you incorporate these trends into your clients' influencer marketing strategies? Well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, the thing I love most about influencer marketing is actually the fact that it's changing constantly. So it's impossible to get bored. Uh, the trend that was very big and very hot two months ago is lost now. So you have to always be able to grasp um, new trends and uh, new tendencies in in the sphere. So I would say that um, standing ahead, uh, staying ahead of the trends um, requires obviously a lot of monitoring um, and constant monitoring of those trends and the platforms and the audience's behavior. So we at Famesters actually have a whole other department that is responsible for our market analysis, for like community researches uh, across TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and many other platforms. So uh, because we have a team that is almost fully dedicated to a constant research of new content that is posted by the influencers, the new trends, it is I wouldn't say it's super easy for us to stay um, on top of those trends, but uh, it definitely provides us with uh, some kind of help and the upper hand in that. Obviously, I would say that having a lot of Gen Z people uh, in our team also helps. All right. So they help you uh, stay on track with social yeah. media trends. So, of course, let's also talk about mistakes because these are probably something that uh, everybody does. So, uh, what are the most common mistakes in iGaming uh, when uh, using social media uh, social media to promote your brand, influencers and streamers uh, for promotion? And how can they avoid these pitfalls? Yeah, um, I think I should be focusing uh, on the most recent um, mistakes that we've seen from uh, a lot of iGaming brands. Uh, so I would say that in the last three to four months, uh, there would be the two top mistakes that we've seen. Uh, one of the key mistakes uh, iGaming businesses tend to make when using casino streamers uh, on platforms like Twitch or Kick is buying small packages of one to two streams. Uh, this approach might seem cost effective before, uh, but it actually does have significant drawbacks. One of them being once the payment stops, the streamer immediately switches to a new platform that either offered him collaboration on a paid basis or since this is basically the streamer's content because their whole content is casino, uh, the, uh, the audience of the streamer will, will also very quickly shift their focus. So um, since casino streamers usually do have a pretty engaged audiences, uh, their interest is often tied directly to what the streamer is actually showing. So if you uh, only buy one to two streams and you expect huge retention rates of the audience that will be brought to the platform, then just don't because uh, it is impossible in this specific 
content category if we're talking about the Twitch um, casino streamers. So without a longer term commitment or a larger package deal, I would say that it becomes almost impossible to drive quality traffic that will actually stay on the platform. So uh, it is a nice idea to actually test out a couple of uh, streams, maybe even one to two streams to see which of the streamers uh, performance you like most or uh, whose way of presenting the product and uh, engagement with the audience you like most. And if you see um, any results from these streamers, then of course uh, you you can scale and you can um, extend those package deals. But uh, it's not the best idea to be expecting a lot of performance and a lot of retention rates from the users that will be brought there. So uh, this is something that can be tricky for a lot of brands, uh, but even when they make this mistake one time, I would say that mo almost everybody learns from it and it's easier for um, brands to be able to build those influence marketing strategies for their future launches. Uh, when they see that, yes, we can test, but we cannot scale and we cannot uh, we cannot scale like immediately. And we uh, instead can look at the performance from like the first two integrations and then make a decision with which of the streamers we would like to actually proceed. And another mistake um, is expecting identical results from previous collaborations with influencers. Uh, in here, I mean that uh, many iGaming brands request uh, like previous performance statistics from the streamers past iGaming really, uh, like partnerships. And they tend to sometimes uh, take them as a universal benchmark, a universal truth, and a 100% guarantee that this is the exact performance that we are going to get. We're, we're not. Uh, obviously, this thing uh, actually dwells on two problems. Because the first problem can be that... Um, if the streamer is providing us with the uh, statistics of their previous launches, these stats are not 100% accurate. They may be, but they also may not be, uh, because as we said before, uh, the casino streamers know how the industry works and they know what numbers and what uh, metrics they should be showing on the screenshots for a brand to actually uh, give them a deal. So uh, this is the first I would say problem inside of the bigger problem. And the second one is that uh, even if the agencies present uh, the brands with the stats of the previous results with this influencer for a different brand, uh, you still cannot dwell your whole strategy and your um, expectations on the numbers from this previous statistics because it's a different product with uh, its own conversion rates, with its own payment methods, and basically a totally different user behavior. Plus, you can never know the exact brief that the influencer was using or a streamer was using, what exactly they were doing um, in those streams and how they were engaging with the audience. Were they just showcasing the platform or were they just doing some crazy stuff, incorporating challenges and collaborating with other streamers, which actually boosts the engagement um, pretty much. So... Even if you request um, the stats, it's actually a nice thing to be requesting those stats to just get an overview of, of what the streamers can do and to compare um, the stats that you get from um, a bigger list of streamers. But you should not be focusing and you should not be taking the stats as the guarantee that you will get the same results. This can be an additional info that will help you build an influencer strategy for you, but this is not a guarantee in any way. All right. So at least you know if they work with a, a company before you, that that company needed those stats. So basically, you can uh, have a summary of that too. So so you guys work with some huge brands out there that we know that use influencer marketing, like OneXBet, Leon, Betwinner, and and others. Maybe probably OneWin as well, because they, I saw that they used many influencer marketing so can you share an example of particularly innovative or or maybe successful campaign you've been part of and, and made it stand out yeah i would say that the most successful and innovative campaigns that we've worked with uh historically uh have always been with the clients uh with who we have exclusive or yearly contracts with us so um this 
uh, types of contracts help us to not just act as an outsource uh, influencer marketing agency, but as an, but as an equal partner that has uh, just as much insight into the launch, uh, more insight into the stats, uh, into the metrics that we have uh, after the launch that actually helps us analyze the traffic, uh, the incoming traffic, uh, well, it is actually incoming. So uh, this allows us to also uh, be able to make some tweaks uh, even when the campaign is actually ongoing. Uh, we have this level of transparency with this like bigger clients. And uh, this way we can test a variety of ideas of different hypotheses and strategies, pushing boundaries to find this actually best performing options. So, for example, with one of our like long-term partners, uh, we had the freedom to experiment with different influencer tiers, content formats, the audience segments, uh, and uh, even the, the briefs in which uh, the influencers were presenting the product. So we had, uh, oh Jesus, um, I think 10 to 9 different, totally different briefs, uh, which were not only different in I don't know the the order in which we were showcasing the platform, but some of them were uh, targeted at collaborative challenges between streamers uh, while working on the product. Some of them were playing games uh, when the one who loses basically uh, on the platform uh, first uh, gets smacked across the face. There were obviously some more uh, realistic and more uh, obvious strategies with just showcasing the product um, and having this package deals of a number of streams and uh, having this freedom to actually test out all of the hypothesis uh, helped us to optimize the, tra the traffic that we were driving. And uh, the conversions that we saw in general after the whole campaign were obviously much higher compared to um, the campaigns that we've had with this client before when we were only focusing on like one to two briefs and when the client wasn't actually ready to experiment with the creativity and with uh, other ad formats, I would say. All right. So this collaborative nature of having this uh, partner relationships uh, allow us to both offer more to the client in terms of like creativity and uh, tests and strategy and actually achieve results that would be impossible without all this trust and uh, without all, all those insights. All right. We need to get you guys at one of our in-person conferences next year because this is some, some great information that... Uh, uh, we are we are often asked about uh, at the, at the conferences and never touched based on influencer marketing in our, our in our in person conferences. So uh, let's talk about also the uh, the dominant platforms for influencer marketing, which is TikTok and Instagram. Uh, so how do you decide which platform is best for particular iGaming brands, and how do you adjust the content accordingly? Um, I would actually say that while TikTok and Instagram are indeed the dominant platforms in the influencer marketing space, they are not always the best fit for iGaming brands, uh, especially due to the platform's restrictions and audience. Yeah. So for gambling-related promotions, we primarily focus on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, since uh, well, they just offer a more suitable environment, I would say, for showcasing um a lot of um, like the, the platform pages and uh, showcasing the gameplay, engaging with audiences in real time and driving this traffic to uh, the platform. So I would say that Twitch and Kick uh, in particular are highly effective for live streaming casino games where like the interactive, um, the process of the interaction of the streamer with the platform actually drives this willingness from, from their audience to actually try it out as well. And as I've mentioned several times today, we really like um, using uh, Twitch streamers and Kick streamers uh, in our influencer marketing strategies for iGaming brands. Because if we're talking about um, performance and high retention rates, these would be the like number number two platforms, then number one and two, uh, to uh, actually pay your interest to and pay your attention to. Uh, YouTube is also a nice uh, choice. But when working with YouTube, you always face this risk of uh, having the videos taken down uh, because of uh, the YouTube community guidelines and because of like the non-conformity of the product with those community guidelines. But still, I would say that YouTube can also drive a uh, nice performance for uh, iGaming vertical. And 
actually compared to Instagram and TikTok, the results are usually much better. Uh, we can we can actually incorporate uh, Instagram and TikTok as well, but I would say that these are purely brand awareness uh, campaigns when we don't have to actually be showcasing a lot of the product. We just need to get the name out. Yeah, so that makes it much easier. All right. Yeah, I was just thinking that could I become an influencer as well? We, I mean, Hip to Talks podcast has around one point three thousand listeners per episode. Is that a good number? Um, I think yeah. Uh, the popularity of like micro blogs and like micro influencers. Uh, in our agency, by micro influencers, we uh, mean uh, the influencers that have like less than 5,000 video views, or in this case, uh, maybe a podcast uh, listeners. But uh, you would actually be surprised probably the how many brands are actually targeting uh, smaller influencers because of the higher loyalty, uh, the higher trust that they have with uh, the influencer or with the host. So uh, I think this trend has been around for a while, for maybe like two years uh, or something like that uh, when the companies try to target more uh, of like micro influencers compared to macro influencers or celebs but uh, it still is showing really good performance and we also try to incorporate smaller uh, blocks with like the macro or medium influencers to be able to provide this higher trust and this higher engagement from the audience yeah, at least the numbers add up because we're not lying about maybe having <laughs> one million views. Then, like like you said, it's uh, it's the trust. So yeah, okay. So so you mentioned uh, the importance of soft skills and communication in your leadership style. So how do you maintain a balance between fostering creativity within your team and also ensuring strategic alignment uh, with the client goals? Uh, I would say that the main thing in here is finding this balance between communication, trust, and still uh, fulfilling all the KPIs that you have set. So I always try to encourage my team to think outside the box, to not be afraid or hesitant to come up with this uh, like new ideas. If they see how we can optimize a specific process uh, in our work, or if they have a really nice creative idea on uh, any client, then I always try to encourage them to come up and uh, offer this idea since we're always open to test out new things if we see that this can actually benefit the company. Uh, another thing I would say is being able to set clear KPIs to uh, each member of the team. We have uh, several departments inside our agency and each of the departments has their own um, motivation system, their own KPIs that they have to meet uh, month by month. So having this clear objective that each employee can um, stick to every month uh, is very important to foster this transparency and this uh, clear communication and trust inside the team. I definitely 100% stand by that because no matter how easy uh, and how popular this phrase, <clears throat> how popular this phrase is, um, is that communication is key. And if you want to drive a success uh, and build a successful team, you have to pay a lot of attention and do a lot of work on your communication with the team and as well as on the communication inside the team. All right. So, wow. I was just thinking about what you said earlier about micro podcasting. Wow. Yeah, but just so, so our audience knows, we are now in season three with our podcast. First season, the first year, we had about 25 to 30 listeners per episode. Season two was around 100. But season three, we, we topped 1,000 on each episode starting season three. So, yeah, but the, you have to give time for your podcast to grow if you're a micro podcaster like we are. Uh, so, okay. So my last question to you, Nadia, is about... Uh, as you are someone with a large influence in the industry, an influencer, uh, as we can say now, uh, uh, if you could start a movement or initiative in the influencer marketing sphere uh, that would have a widespread positive impact, what would it be and and, and why? 
That's actually a very nice question. Um, I think that if I could start uh, some kind of like this big change or a uh, big movement inside of influencer marketing, it would 100% be centered around fostering the influencers' involvement and influencers' ownership um, of the creative process that helps brands achieve their KPIs. Uh, too often, unfortunately, we see influencers and streamers take the sponsorship deals without truly engaging with the content. Uh, some of them do not really care about uh, the results that the client will see after the publication. And they just follow the brief provided by the agency. Sometimes they uh, even request uh, helping with the script and helping with the scenario, basically everything. Um, this can lead to campaigns feeling lifeless, I would say, forced and probably even inauthentic, um, which will ultimately affect performance no matter how you look at it. So I believe that encouraging influencers to take ownership of this uh, creative part and collaborating more closely with brands and agencies, we could be seeing far far more impactful and authentic campaigns. So um, I think that when the influencers are actually genuinely excited about the product and they are really involved uh, in this process of showcasing the product and uh, presenting it to the audience in a really organic and authentic way, then the results will also be completely different. So if I could make one big change in influence marketing, that will 100% be it. All right. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank you so much for these great answers. Uh, thank you for our audience for sticking around. And uh, if you have some, maybe some shout outs you want to give to the team or maybe clients, here's the time. Uh, yeah, I would actually like to thank my team uh, and to actually thank every team of every vertical that we work with, because as I said, I really believe in building business, building trust and building uh, this transparent communication inside of the teams. And uh, each day, each month, uh, I see that every one of these teams uh, is able to overcome the challenges, the difficulties, and um, they're always trying to help the company as well as help the other teams and the clients themselves. So uh, if I were to uh, give a shout out to only one team that would probably be the whole team of the agency because uh, everyone is working really hard on every project that we work on. And I'm truly proud of uh, every member of the team. All right. So you heard it. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. And we will be back next week with more crazy stuff. Take good care, everyone. Bye. And that's a wrap for this section of Hitler Talks. Thank you for being a part of our journey today. Don't forget to tune in next week for more insights and discussions. Stay connected with us on Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and more. Until then, keep exploring and keep growing. We'll see you next time.